we will have revenge. The Phantom Menace is expected to earn billions at the box office, but like the original films, the spin-offs will earn even more. We haven't much time. Tales of Jedi Knights battling the evil empire earned a fortune for the makers of Star Wars and gave birth to mass market merchandising. The demand for toy figures like this was unprecedented, but this time it's predicted the new film will sell even more toys than its predecessors. But whereas fans in the US can buy a wide range of figures, only a limited number of toys went on sale across the UK today. Shops are being prevented from selling more by the film's makers. I'm looking for the new Star Wars lightsaber. Have you got it? I haven't, I'm afraid we're not actually allowed to. They're not on sale until June the 18th. Retailers say they're being forced to turn customers away. There is a, an early release of figures, which I can show you because they're on the shop floor, but there's a lot more stuff that's coming that we can't show you and we are contracted not to show you. We've actually to sign a secrecy document, um, not to give away the secrets. Just like in Star Wars, you know, the plans can't fall into the wrong hands, otherwise you never know what might happen. Manufacturers say they'll do their best to meet demand for the toys, but seasoned observers believe there may be shortages, and once again, consumers here will lose out. The children and parents know all about this product. They've got to have something to satisfy that demand. But come July, when the film eventually opens in the UK, they're not going to be guaranteed any product. Perhaps it's going to be another Furby or another Teletubbies, because America, in this instance, will get first rights to all Star Wars products. And evidence that traders in America are already cashing in ahead of the UK launch. Through unofficial Star Wars internet sites, they're making a tidy profit, selling toys to fans in Europe who just can't wait. Denise Mahoney, BBC News. Scientists in Warwick believe they've discovered the secret of the perfect strawberry. They say they now know what it takes to make a strawberry of exactly the right size, colour and sweetness. There's nothing more divine than the summer strawberry, but the rest of the year it often doesn't come up to scratch. But now Warwick scientists believe they've identified the genes controlling the taste, smell and texture. In short, the recipe for perfection. What we're really trying to do is to understand the secret of the perfect strawberry. Uh, this uh, uh, will involve understanding what makes it ripen, and particularly how it softens and more, more so the flavour of the fruit and uh, this is going to be very useful for breeders uh, to be able to improve the fruit in the future. The research has involved the very highest of technology and some of the very lowest. So in the lab we take the strawberries and we grind them up in liquid nitrogen. Now this is extremely cold and the fruit becomes very brittle um, and uh, we are able to grind the fruits into a fine powder which helps us to extract the genetic material. So that was the low tech, this is the high tech where we separate the DNA and look at it. And this is an example of what we find. We can see clear differences between the red and the green fruit. These bands here, for example, would be, could possibly be flavour related. If this work does bear fruit, the scientists could create the perfect strawberry in the lab, but they won't. Genetic modification is, um, is a relatively new procedure, but plant breeding has gone on uh, in the case of strawberry for the last two or three centuries. And what we're doing is help the breeder speed up that process by, um, by helping him select the best parents to make those crosses. So the strawberry of the future, created in the Midlands, may never need sugar and cream again. Time for a reminder of our top stories this morning. Managers at